Longtime Fox News host Ainsley Earhart has built a reputation as a TV star with a seemingly perfect life. With her trademark smile and all-American image, she's even been dubbed the media's Barbie. But behind the camera, it's been a different story. From two high-profile divorces and a heartbreaking miscarriage to her mother's tragic passing, Earhart's personal battles have been far from picture-perfect. So what's the real story behind her rise to fame and all those hidden struggles? Ainsley Earhart's story starts in Spartanburg, South Carolina. As a child, her family soon moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Here, Earhart spent most of her early years in a suburb called Foxcroft, surrounded by the culture of the South. Eventually, the family relocated again, this time to the Columbia area in South Carolina. It's where Earhart entered her teenage years attending Spring Valley High School. She was active, participating in different activities and quickly becoming a standout among her peers. After graduating from high school, Earhart initially enrolled at Florida State University. She studied biology, but her interests quickly shifted. Journalism caught her eye, leading her to transfer to the University of South Carolina, where she earned her B.A. in journalism. The move made sense. Columbia was not just home, but a place where her ambitions could find early opportunities. While still completing her studies, Earhart managed to land a reporting job at WLTX, a local CBS affiliate in Columbia. From 2000 to 2004, she worked as the morning and noon anchor. It wasn't just about delivering news, but connecting with the community, building trust with viewers. During this period, she got her first taste of national attention. After the 11th of September attacks, she traveled to New York City to cover South Carolina middle school students who had raised nearly half a million dollars for firefighters. It was a moving story that showcased her ability to handle significant events with compassion and clarity. In 2005, Earhart sought bigger challenges. She packed her bags and moved to San Antonio, Texas, joining Ken's TV. There, she became the morning and noon anchor, continuing to build her reputation as a reliable news presenter. Texas brought new adventures. She completed a half marathon in Austin, went skydiving with the U.S. Army's Golden Knights, and even flew in an F-16 with the United States Air Force Thunderbirds. These experiences made Earhart a more dynamic storyteller, bringing an element of thrill to her reporting style. By 2007, it was time for another leap. Earhart moved to New York City, starting her journey with Fox News. The change was significant. She was now part of a national network in front of a much larger audience. Her initial role was to appear on various segments, including Hannity, where she hosted Ainsley Across America. This segment allowed her to showcase her Southern charm and personal connection with stories from different parts of the country. The segments were lighthearted and relatable giving her a platform to present stories through an engaging lens. As Earhart's presence on Fox News grew, she started to take on more roles. She co-hosted shows like Fox and Friends Weekend, All-American New Year's Eve, and America's News Headquarters. She was also seen on the live desk in Red Eye with Greg Gutfeld. These appearances showed her versatility, transitioning smoothly from morning news to late-night commentary. Her boldness combined with her approachability, made her a favorite among viewers, especially those aligned with the network's conservative audience. Earhart's big break came in 2016 when she became the co-host of Fox and Friends. It was a pivotal moment in her career. Fox and Friends wasn't just another morning show. It was a platform that frequently drew attention from key figures, including then-President Donald Trump. Trump frequently tweeted about the show, particularly highlighting Earhart's segments. Her interviews with both Trump and Vice President Mike Pence cemented her status as one of the network's prominent figures. In a 2018 interview with Trump, she praised him for allegedly recording James Comey, the former FBI director, saying it was a smart way to ensure honesty during congressional hearings. Earhart's on-air support of Trump became a notable aspect of her persona, especially during the administration's most controversial moments. Earhart also became known for her takes on various topics, often defending Trump's decisions. For instance, when Trump withdrew the U.S. from the Paris Climate Agreement, 
Earhart questioned why President Obama had thought the agreement was beneficial for America. In another moment, she described the agreement as unfair to the U.S. This firm stance on conservative positions resonated with many Fox viewers, even if it drew criticism from opponents. Her defense of Trump's firing of James Comey was straightforward. He gets to decide who works for him. Earhart's consistent support was part of what made her a standout on Fox and Friends. At times, this alignment led to bizarre moments, like when she described images of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un touring his country as very romantic. These off-the-cuff comments, whether perceived as naive or deliberate, kept her in the spotlight, often going viral. Earhart's delivery was not always accurate. In 2017, she incorrectly claimed that 5.7 million illegal immigrants might have voted in the 2008 election, a statement quickly debunked. Another blunder came in 2018, when she mistakenly referred to Japan as communist while discussing World War II. Co-host Steve Ducey tried to cover for her, but the clip spread quickly, drawing ridicule. Despite controversies, Earhart remained firm in her views. She criticized the liberal media, saying it discouraged Republicans from running for office. In 2018, after a New York Times report revealed how Trump had inherited nearly half a billion dollars from his father through dubious tax schemes, Earhart accused the newspaper of bashing Trump's father rather than focusing on Trump's accomplishments. Religion also became a central theme for Earhart. She often expressed her frustration about attacks on Christianity. For example, when a Missouri Sheriff's Department faced criticism for placing In God We Trust decals on squad cars, Earhart argued for the majority, saying she was tired of protecting the rights of the minority. During Trump's controversial decision to order the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, Earhart urged viewers to trust the intelligence community despite her earlier skepticism of it during the Trump presidency. Her stance shifted dramatically when it aligned with Trump's agenda, further highlighting her allegiance. One of the more lighthearted moments turned into another viral clip in 2021. Earhart described the Fox Christmas tree as a symbol of the Christmas spirit, about Jesus, about Hanukkah. The error drew mockery and corrections from other outlets, adding to her list of missteps. In addition to her on-screen role, Earhart has written three children's books, Take Heart, My Child, Through Your Eyes, and I'm So Glad You Were Born. Her memoir, The Light Within Me, reflects her personal journey, blending faith and career aspirations. Despite controversy, she's remained a fixture at Fox, loved by some and criticized by others. For all her success on screen, her off-screen relationships have been a mix of love, heartbreak, and plenty of tabloid buzz. Let's rewind to her first major romance, Kevin McKinney. The two were college sweethearts, sharing the hopes and dreams of young love. In 2005, they tied the knot. It was a happy beginning, but the marriage didn't last. By 2009, things fell apart. Rumors swirled about infidelity, though neither Earhart nor McKinney spoke publicly about what went wrong. Was it really a third party? We'll never know for sure, but the end was abrupt and final. Not one to give up on love, Earhart moved forward. Just two years later, in 2011, she married Will Proctor, a former star quarterback from Clemson University. It seemed like the perfect match. Proctor was handsome, successful, and shared Earhart's southern roots. For a while, everything appeared blissful. In 2015, they welcomed their daughter, Hayden. Earhart often spoke of Hayden as her biggest joy calling motherhood her most rewarding role. But cracks soon showed in her marriage to Proctor. In 2018, it ended in another dramatic divorce. Reports of Proctor's alleged affair with one of Earhart's close friends made headlines. Proctor denied the rumors, insisting there was not one ounce of truth to the claims. Still, he admitted Earhart was the one who decided to call it quits. He said he was committed to co-parenting Hayden and maintaining a friendly relationship with Earhart, despite the split. Amid all this turmoil, Earhart's rumored romance with Sean Hannity began making waves. It started subtly with whispers among the media insiders. Then, it gained traction. Hannity, like Earhart, 
was also coming off a marriage. The two were often seen together, fueling speculation about their status. Earhart kept her responses vague, emphasizing her focus on Hayden. When asked about her love life, she maintained hope, saying, I would love to find love again, and mentioned that she wanted to set a good example of a loving relationship for her daughter. Is Hannity the one? Only time will tell. Earhart's personal life hasn't just been complicated by romance. Her journey into motherhood was anything but smooth. For much of her 20s and early 30s, she focused relentlessly on her career. She had a plan, and she followed it. Get established, move up, and eventually reach the top of the TV news world. By the time she was ready to start a family, things didn't go as planned. In a candid reflection titled, My Perfect Plan, she revealed how her road to motherhood came with unexpected obstacles. She admitted that she hadn't felt a strong urge to have children until she reached her late 30s. But once she did, she wanted a big family, four kids to be exact. The timing, however, didn't align with her vision. By the time Earhart actively tried to conceive, it wasn't easy. Her body didn't respond as she hoped. In an essay for Women's Health, she shared how this chapter became a season of patience. Earhart felt sadness when months of trying brought no success. She watched friends and colleagues get pregnant easily. She saw mothers with strollers everywhere on the streets, at parks, and on TV. The disappointment was real, but she pressed on. After eight months of trying, Earhart finally got the news she longed for. She was pregnant. The joy was immense. She and Proctor were thrilled. They heard their baby's heartbeat during a doctor's visit and it felt like a miracle. But it was short-lived. By the next appointment, that heartbeat was gone. Earhart was crushed. It was more than she could have prepared for. And she struggled to accept the loss. In her women's health essay, she described the pain as unexpected and crushing. She sought comfort in her faith, believing that her lost child was now home in heaven. The aftermath was grueling. Earhart had to undergo multiple surgeries to remove the unborn child. Doctors discovered that the baby had an extra chromosome. It was a double blow. Earhart and Proctor decided to take a break from trying. But then, another surprise came. Just months later, Earhart was pregnant again. The pregnancy went smoothly, and in November 2015, Hayden was born. This time, Earhart felt the pure joy of motherhood. She spoke often of how Hayden had changed her life, making her embrace every moment. She learned to be present, knowing that nothing in life is guaranteed. Reflecting on her miscarriage, Earhart shared how it shifted her perspective on life. It taught her to appreciate even the smallest things. In an interview with Yahoo Life, she said, we just don't know what the future holds. I embrace every single second with Hayden. Meanwhile, Earhart's faith continued to play a significant role in her life. Despite two failed marriages, heartbreak, and a challenging path to motherhood, she held on to the belief that things would work out. She saw her setbacks as part of a bigger plan, often emphasizing how God was guiding her through each twist and turn. It's a mindset that defines much of her public persona, making her relatable to many of her viewers. Ainsley Earhart has never been shy about sharing the deepest struggles of her life. One of the most heartbreaking stories she's opened up about involves her mother, Dale. Dale's health was a constant battle. It started with a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes at age 39. For decades, she endured three shots a day and countless finger pricks. Despite the challenges, Dale remained strong, always focused on her family and faith. But things took a darker turn in 2018 when Dale suffered a massive stroke. It was a close call. Earhart's father found Dale just in time and doctors rushed her into emergency surgery. Earhart described her mom as a fighter, a warrior, and a woman of God. Dale pulled through the stroke, but it marked the beginning of a long decline in her health. Earhart's updates during this time were raw and personal. She wanted people to understand the pain, but also the power of faith and family. In March 2022, Earhart shared a touching Facebook post recounting Dale's resilience and unwavering spirit. Dale's strength inspired Earhart, who spoke of her mother's faith often. But on October 22, 2022, Dale's health struggles came to an end. She passed away. It was a devastating loss. Yet, just days later, Earhart appeared on Fox & Friends, 
She addressed the audience directly, saying, You all probably are wondering how I can come to work today. Her answer was simple. My mom would have wanted me to. Dale had always encouraged Earhart's dedication to her career even during her worst days. It was a testament to Dale's strength and to Earhart's resolve. Despite the personal grief, Earhart found comfort in her faith. She believes her mother is now in a better place, reunited with Jesus, whom she loved dearly. Dale's devotion to God was a constant part of Earhart's upbringing. We're just grateful we know her faith was strong, Earhart shared, emphasizing that Dale's teachings about faith, love, and kindness have shaped her. The loss is undeniable, but the belief that Dale is at peace keeps Earhart moving forward. It's not just personal struggles that define Earhart's journey. As a bold, conservative voice, she's often caught in the crossfire of public scrutiny. Controversy isn't new to her. In 2020, comedian Seth Meyers took a jab at her on Late Night, calling her a self-serving hypocrite over her stance on U.S. intelligence agencies. But it didn't stop there. Fellow journalist Soledad O'Brien didn't hold back either. On the new Abnormal podcast, she labeled Earhart a stupid blonde and a complete non-intelligent human being. The criticism stung, targeting Earhart's views on Fox's COVID-19 vaccine coverage. O'Brien blasted her opinions as unimaginably ill-informed. But Earhart doesn't let the insults get to her. She's well aware of the criticism. It's part of the territory, and she's accepted that. In an interview with Faithwire, Earhart laid it out. There are going to be people who attack me. There are going to be haters. Her approach? Simple. They don't know me. They don't know my heart. I love them. Earhart's faith keeps her grounded. She's convinced that God placed her in this position for a reason. She knows the role comes with challenges and criticism. I just try to be the best person I can be, she says. If people don't like me for that, what do you want me to be? Something that I'm not? You can always turn the channel. Her resilience is clear. Earhart remains unfazed by what her critics say. She's focused on authenticity. In a world where opinions clash and debates get heated, Earhart sticks to her truth. It's a mix of faith, personal conviction, and the belief that she's meant to be where she is, doing what she does. It's this certainty that keeps her moving forward, even when the noise gets loud. Through it all, Ainsley Earhart has remained a fixture on Fox and Friends. The personal challenges, the public scrutiny, it's all part of her story. But Earhart's story is not just about survival. It's about resilience, love, and a relentless pursuit of truth. Whether it's discussing politics or sharing personal losses, she brings a raw honesty to the table. She's not perfect, and she doesn't claim to be. But she's real, and that's what keeps her viewers coming back. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into Ainsley Earhart's life, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Let us know your thoughts, whether you love her, hate her, or just want to share your opinion. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss another story.